All right, folks, happy Friday again. It's four o'clock. I'm gonna do a little video explaining how a dehumidification system works. These are Munter's units here. Do a quick walk around of the unit here. Give you a quick sneak peek inside. Filter housing, outside air. Got a blower motor up underneath there. This charges out the top. This section, we got a heat wheel. That's your heat wheel that turns. Got a membrane filter on it. Air filtration here for this condenser, which is off stage one compressor, I'll explain. An 800,000 BTU of heat and a couple condenser fan motors. So we'll walk around. I'll make this only two or three minutes. What we have here is a control panel with a whole bunch of stuff. We got four compressors. So this thing is 30 ton, there's seven and a half ton a piece, and I got three of them on this roof, so it's times three. So we got 30 tons of air conditioning on this unit. Compressor two, three, and four go to a big condenser here at the end. This big condenser has two big fan motors, of course, and this panel's normally shut. That draws the air through the condenser like a normal refrigerant cycle or air conditioning cycle and that removes the heat condenses it to a liquid for the evaporator the first compressor is a little different that compressor instead of running through a condenser here has its own air intake right here with a little condenser the blower on the outside of this unit draws the air through this little motor right up under here and discharges to the top draws air in here it heats the air goes through a pre-filter into this membrane on a heat wheel that turns real slow for regenerating the heat wheel removing the moisture and preheating the air coming in so that's how that works Come back around. So these four compressors, we have frequency drives, one for the react fan, one for the supply fan, and then the condensers just run or don't run. Compressor breakers, a Corel controller, we got smoke detector in here too, a bunch of pressure sensors, static, some ports for testing. Here's the other side of the heat wheel with a little motor that turns it real slow. Like I said, this is 100% outside air, so this doesn't recirculate the air in the store. It draws outside air. That's why in the winter it's vital that burners work. This is blowing air down into the store that's conditioned. Like I said, we regenerate the heat wheel over on the other side. The air comes through this filter bank, 100% outside air. Once again, you can see the outside, see the filters. This is your regular refrigeration coil circuit A, B, C, and D. Your four coils for your four compressor. So your air conditioning, the air with the compressors, cooling it, removing the moisture, which will fill that drain pan, which in the summertime, water just absolutely pisses out the drains on these things. Big drain here. Right now we got nothing coming out. It's not running and it's not warm out. So we're pulling 100% outside air, running it through a heat wheel running that down into the store. This heater is to make up the difference when it's cold out, when you can't get enough heat from this or you're not required to run this. When it's so cold outside, you don't need to air condition the air, we just need to dry it. And that's where the heaters come in. So, looks complex, but it's really a simple process. And the regeneration of the heat wheel, the air blows out the top there as a vent, a damper in there so the rain don't get in it. That's that big fan motor once again down there. So 100% outside air. It's filtered so you don't clog up the heat wheel. That's going through the coil. You got a heat wheel and a bypass damper. Normally most of the air goes through there and then you got a bypass damper that's partially open right now. Blower blows it down into the store, which is clean, dry air. 100% makeup air. I know. Like I said, we got fans and relays and controllers. 
30 tons. So if your normal home AC is three tons, this is like equivalent to 10 of them. Your normal furnace at home might be 100,000 BTU. This one's 800,000. It's like eight of them. And that, my friends, is how a Munter's dehumidification unit works. These are propane, because of course, we're rural on the Eastern Shore, don't have natural gas. We got one over there, one here on the supermarket side, and number three way over there is for general merchandise to keep the humidity right in the rest of the store. But the refrigeration side of the store is the important part. That's why I'm spending my Friday up here getting this running, getting as much stuff as I can get running, running, because it hasn't been running in a long time. I've been gone 16 months. So, America, let me close all the panels because the unit won't run with the panels open. We got safety switches on a lot of these critical doors that won't even power up. And, uh, that's what it takes to keep the humidity out of the store and how you can have open case refrigeration where you don't have doors where you can reach in and just grab stuff. This is a major part of it. It all works together. So, happy Friday. Hope you enjoyed your quick little nickel tour of the dehumidification unit.